Hi, my name is Taylor Williams, and I'm going to talk to you about different types of fish migration. And we're going to focus on differential migration today. Migration is defined as a directed movement of an organism between specific areas. It is important to understand fish migration because it we need to protect our species from being overfished. If we are able to protect our species by knowing where they're migrating to, we can create fishing regulations and lower overfishing rates. This is the migration triangle. Common mig migration, this is the most common type of migration in marine fish. Fish population lifetime, this is the fish population lifetime migration track, and it is driven by natal honing, which is the capacity for individuals to spawn from where they originate from. As you can see, the top, they have a spawning habitat, and this is where the adults go during a specific time of the year and it is a specific place. And then after they spawn, larvae are dispersed to a nursery habitat. And at this nursery habitat, they will grow and then they will have their juvenile migration where they migrate to an adult habitat. At adult habitat, they'll live their life and then they will make this back and forth spawning migration where they go to the spawning habitat that where they were once spawned at and migrate back to their adult habitat where they forage at. Some other common terms that we're going to talk about today are adopted migration. Adopted migration is movement acquired through social transmission. This is when an experienced or adult fish will teach a naive or juvenile fish. This is transmitted through interactions or numerical dominance. An example of this is the herring populations off the Norwegian, Norwegian coast. On the Norwegian coast, there is a spring spawning herring population, and there is also a small local, and local population, and they interact with one another. A study done on the otolith microstructure and morphological traits showed that cross-breeding was occurring within these two herring populations. In the spring spawning population, there was a fraction of the individuals that were from the local population, but these individuals behaved as though they were from the spring spawning population. These individuals had adopted resident behaviors and this is termed culture population because they learn their behaviors from the adult or experienced one fish. This is adopted migration because their movement, their migratory movements are acquired through social transmission. Some other terms we're going to discuss are Interruptive migration, which is the expansions of a group's abundance or spatial distribution, often associated with mass movement by a population into a novel habitat or ecosystem. P partial migration is the coexistence of two or more life cycles within the same population. Traditionally, an individual traditionally individuals have migratory and sedentary life cycles. We're going to focus on partial migration, which we said earlier was the coexistence of two or more life cycle, cycles within the same population. Three, the three dominant types of partial migration are non-natal divergent, natal divergent, and differential migration. Remember, our talk today is going to have a focus on differential migration later on. Non-natal divergence is when one individual stays in the natal habitat while another disembarks but returns to spawn. A these are classic types of partial migration. An example of this would be blue marlin, albacore tunas, and white sharks because they have 
a shelf and oceanic associated component of their population. Natal divergence is when resident and migratory individuals co-mingle during breeding season. They originally have separate natal habitats, but this is termed breeding partial migration. An example of this would be the Atlantic herring who migrate to feeding grounds and wintering grounds that are separate of their breeding season habitat. So differential migration. This is what we're going to focus on today. This is migration within a population dependent on size, age, sex, or other attributes. Size and sex can lead to other types of partial migration, for example, natal divergence, skip spawning, and straying. Switching is an abrupt shift in migratory behavior that occurs within differential migration species. There is a mako shark in this image, and think about reasons why they could be differential migration species. Do you think it's size, age, sex, or another attribute? We'll learn about that later. So there are many factors of fish migration. There are external factors, internal state, organismal design, and movement paths. For the external factors, these are changes in foraging, predation rates, seasonal changes in abiotic condition. External factors are going to think about things like the food web, population density, abiot and abiotic condition, and there's also the internal state, which is going to think about size, energetic, and physiology. These are the why and when of why fish will migrate. So there's also the organismal design, and it's an individual's need to migrate. This is going to have a navigation component that focuses on sensory cues, inner hesitance, imprinting, and learning. And the other section of the organismal design will be the movement capacity that focuses on structure and morphology. Movement paths um, can be can alter the individual's environmental and internal state. They can also influence an individual's decision to continue to move or to undertake a sedentary lifestyle. So again, these are the why, when, where, how, and what. So of why fish migrate. It's important to understand migration, like I said earlier, to protect species. Overfishing is the leading cause of fish decline in the world today, so we need to understand these things so we can create protected areas for these organisms and we can monitor fishing in these areas to protect the biodiversity of our marine ecosystems. Fact, other factors for fish migration are the cost of transportation. Um, this figure shows the estimated energy required to move one gram over one kilometer. As you can see, birds have a greater cost of travel because they have to generate the lift and forward thrust. While fish are in a aquatic ecosystem where they have a swim bladder, often have a swim bladder or um, fatty lipids to help them stay buoyant in their ecosystem. But as you can see with both birds and fishes, as they get larger in size, the energetic cost for them to swim becomes, swim a greater distance becomes a lot lower. Fish locomotion. If you look at this figure, there are a lot of factors that affect fish locomotion. The shape of their tail can 
affect their ability to cruise, accelerate, or be maneuverable. They also have undulatory and oscillatory factors that play within the fish. You can see here, this is undulating, allows for undulating, undulative swimming, while these allow for oscillating swimming. Fish locomotion meets a diversity of demands within the fish, such as feeding. Organisms such as tuna are going to need to be able to swim very fast to be able to feed. And other things include evasion of predators. This is common in things like the coral reef system and things like reproduction and migration as well.